Good morning to the Commonwealth. This is Young Honey with Raw Dog Radio, bringing you the greatest old-time radio station since the bombs fell. If you're just tuning in, welcome. We're going to be hitting you with an arrangement of ragtime, unabridged stories, and other old-world medias just for you to fall asleep to or relax to. I'd like to send a specific thank you to publicdomainreview.org and archive.org for organizing and compiling all of this media. If you would like to listen to the standalone media, we have included a link in the description. Our last series followed the Frontier Man, but we're going to switch gears to the Adventures of the Falcon. Hailing from the 1940s, the hard-boiled spy drama is now around 80 years old. If you can provide proof of your existence when it released as a syndicated radio series, I will personally come visit and cook you a continental breakfast. Without further ado, let's get to listening. The Kraft Foods Company brings you The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Carol. I'm glad you called. Now, you'll have to count me out tonight, Angel. I'm all jammed up. Mm-hmm. A hypochondriac, I know, is having trouble sleeping. And someone prescribed a little lead pill. Unless I stop him, he may take it right between the eyes. This is Ed Hurley, friends, inviting you on behalf of the Kraft Foods Company to listen to The Adventures of the Falcon, transcribed today. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Hypocritical Hypo. Has a flavor so pleasing. Miracle Whip. Tastes so lively, so teasing. Miracle Whip. Only one of its kind. Miracle Whip. Best salad dressing you'll find. Miracle Whip tastes really good. Not too sharp, not too mild, but just exactly right. And Miracle Whip tastes different, too. Different from any other salad dressing. Try it yourself. See why it's America's favorite salad dressing. The one and only... Miracle Whip. And now, the case of the hypocritical hypo. It's Wednesday evening in New York, and the rain is coming down in the proverbial buckets. From a window in a little Brooklyn hideout, a gentleman named Fred DeSantis watches anxiously. Then finally, a car draws up to the curb. A few minutes later, there's a knock at the door. And Mr. DeSantis almost knocks over a lamp in his eagerness to answer. Hello, Fred. You alone, Danny? What else? Where's Margie? She wouldn't come. What do you mean, she wouldn't come? Give a fella a chance to take his coat off, will you? I asked you something, Danny. Honest, DeSantis, have a little consideration. I could catch pneumonia this way. Any doctor will tell you... Where's Margie? I told you she didn't come with me. Why not? She said, how did she know it wasn't a trap? There was no way of checking. You ain't got a phone here. Told her you were working for me. Sure, but you wouldn't believe me. What does she want me to do? Call for the money myself? That's what she said. Well, you go right back to her. Don't do any good, Fred. I practically got on my knees to the girl. All she said was, if DeSantis wants his dough, let him come and get it. And how far does she think I'd get with Larry Sloan looking for me? I told her that, too, but she wouldn't listen. Look, I got an idea. How would it be if you gave me a note? If I gave you a note. Yeah, to Margie. You can tell her if she don't want to come over here herself, she can turn the money over to me. She can what? I mean to bring to you. Hey, you nuts. Well, what's the matter? You think I'd trust you with 65 grand? Oh, now that hurts, Fred. All I'm trying to do is be helpful. You can't say I haven't proved it. What are you trying to give me? Who else would go out on a night like this? I'm liable to catch my death of cold. Don't make me laugh. Yeah, well, I'm very susceptible. Well, if that's the way you feel about it. Oh, right wait up. a minute, Danny. Yeah? Swear in your kid's life? I swear by my kid. Now you're satisfied? No, but I can't help myself. Get me a pen and some paper. Mr. 
Say, buddy. Me? Yeah. I wonder if you could help me out. Now, look, mister, I'm in a hurry. If you don't mind. Relax, kid. Someone would think I was going to brace you for a touch. You live in that house? Why? Because if you do, you must be Danny Graham. Well, what if I am? Well, my name is Cy Nichols. Yeah, well, look, Mr. Nichols, I'm not a well man. You'd never guess it to look at you. Well, appearances can be deceiving, you know. So if you'll excuse me. Ah, take it easy, Danny. A friend of mine wants to talk to you. Your friend's name wouldn't be Larry Sloan, would it? And what made you say that? I wasn't born yesterday. And if Mr. Sloan wants me... That he does, Danny. When Larry Sloan wants something bad enough, you're gonna get it. Oh. Yes? Uh, I wonder if I have the right place. Well, that all depends. What place are you looking for? Are you Mike Waring? Mm-hmm. I mean, the private detective they call a falcon? That's right. Oh. Well, my name is Pearl Graham. Won't you come in? Thanks. Let me take your coat. No, I, I can't stay long. I left my baby with a neighbor. Well, what can I do for you, Mrs. Graham? I... I don't know if you can do anything. My husband's disappeared. Your husband? His name is Danny. He hasn't been home since last night. Did you report it to the police? Yeah, but they told me not to worry. Well, you don't seem to have much luck following their prescription. I'm going out of my mind, Mr. Waring. Danny never did anything like this before. What does your husband do? Well, that's hard to say. Right now, he's working for Mr. DeSantis. What DeSantis would that be? I don't know his first name. Well, what kind of work does Danny do for him? I don't know exactly. <laughs> When you come right down to it, you don't seem to know very much about anything. Well, Danny believes that a wife shouldn't interfere in her husband's business. He thinks her place is in the home. Uh, a fellow named Hitler had the same idea. What? Uh, nothing. Well, I'll do what I can, Mrs. Graham. Though I've got a hunch if your husband doesn't show up, you'll be way ahead of the game. <laughs> Must really enjoy your work, Si. You realize Graham's been out for almost 24 hours? What'd you hit him with, anyway? Well, you know how it is, Sloan. No, I don't know. That's why I... Now, who that? I can't imagine. Think it'd be Fred? No, DeSantis wouldn't have missed him yet. Keep an eye on him, I'll get it. All right, hold your horses, will you? Hello, Larry. What are you doing here, Hazel? I surprised you, didn't I? You certainly did. What's the matter with Los Angeles? Nothing. So why didn't you stay there? I got lonesome for you. You got lonesome for me. I got a good mind to knock your teeth out. Will you listen to him? I traveled 3,000 miles to see him and all... I... Hey, what was that? It's none of your business. Well, who's that fellow Look, on the Look, Hazel, bed? if you don't get out of hey, here... Hey, that's Danny Graham, ain't it? How did you know that? What's the matter with you, Larry? You know I used to work here in New York. It was in, let me think. Uh, it... Do it outside. You mean you don't want me here? How'd you ever figure that out? Well, when a man says hey, to me... I'll be right with you, sir. Hey, who's he? Nobody you should know. Now, beat it. Well, at least give me a chance I, to use uh, the... I told you something, Hazel, didn't I? Okay, Larry. You'll see if you won't be sorry. Oh, go on, get lost. Not bad, if you like him stupid. You're uh, running off at the mouth, sign. No offense intended. Get him up. All right. Come on, Danny. Come on. Rise oh, and shine. God. Let me along. Get up, boy. This is Reveille. Huh? Hello, Graham. Oh, you're Larry Sloan. That's right. I'm awfully sorry about this. It should be. You know, he could have fractured my skull. Where's the mirror? Sit down. Lay off him, sign. Listen, Danny... I want to talk to you. You're not kidding me, Sloan. I know what you're going to say. You'd like to know where Fred DeSantis is hiding out. But you're not going to tell me, huh? I swore on my child's life. So what? So on top of that, this... this... Uh, 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 careful. Yeah, I'll be lucky if I don't have a concussion. Do you know that the skull is the tenderest oh, part of... Oh, shut up. Well, if you think I'm going to tell you where DeSantis is just like that, you're wrong. Am I? Yeah. It's going to cost you a grand. What? And it's worth a lot more. I know why you're after him. Do you? Well, I can draw my own conclusions. You had a roll on him big enough to choke a horse. How much was in it? I didn't stop to count it. But I figured it ought to be worth a thousand. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do, Danny. I'll give you a hundred now on the balance after I see to Satis. 
Well, I really shouldn't, but okay. Mm -hmm. 20, 40, 50, and 50 makes 100. He's in Brooklyn. Where in Brooklyn? Got a furnished room at 1440 Kelvin. If you're lying to me, Graham... I swear by my... It's the truth, Mr. Sloan. Can I go now? Yeah. You, uh... You won't say anything to the I Sanford won't about say it. anything to him. Well, lots of luck. Oh, thanks. You know, he could be tossing you a curve. Yes, I thought of that. And, uh, supposing he tips off to Sanus? Would you believe it, Cy? I thought of that, too. Get your coat. I feel like a little ride. She have put that hot water bottle. If I told her once, I told her a thousand you, times. Daddy? Who'd you expect, Pearl? Where have you been? I was going out of my mind. Well, you didn't have far to travel. I even hired a private detective to find you. You what? Yeah, Mike Waring. What'd you do that for? I told you I was worried sick. Well, you call him and tell him the wandering boy has returned. Is that all the shirts I've got? No, there's some in the bottom drawer. You going off again? Yeah, I gotta run over to Philly for Mr. DeSantis. How long will you be gone? Just overnight. Well, what do you need all those shirts for? I'm going to change every five minutes. Any more questions? You're going away with that girl. What girl? Hazel. Hazel? Hazel Fulton. What, are you crazy? I don't know anybody, but... She called me? Yes. Well, what do you know? I haven't heard from her in years. I thought she was in Los Angeles. You're not fooling me. You're planning to run away with her. I wasn't planning on a pearl, but it's not a bad idea. What about me and the baby? Let your father support you. He's got apartment houses. I'm not going to let you go, Danny. Don't be a dope. I mean it. Are you going to get out of my way? I'm warning you, you walk out of that door. <laughs> Danny? Danny! How are you, Mike? Long time no see. Yeah, Ed, feels like a week. <laughs> well, what do you have? Well, I don't know. What do you suggest? I wish you'd ask me that sometime. Oh, hi, oh, Sergeant. Dear. What are you doing here? Well, I had something to tell you, but it kind of slipped my mind. Well, that's a great help. Speaking of great helps, Mike, that reminds me. Did you ever try a fresh, crisp, chopped lettuce salad to cool off with? Oh, yes, indeed. These are my salad days, you know. Oh, you mean you're green and fresh and all mixed up? Why, Sergeant, you surprise me. That's tough to top. Mm-mm. Not if you top it with Miracle Whip. Oh, that's pretty good, Eddie. <laughs> Can you beat that one, Sergeant? No, 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 no. After all, it's Eddie's favorite subject. That's right, because Miracle Whip's my favorite dressing. And on you, it looks good. On salads, it tastes good, Mike. Mm. Because it's a doggone delicious salad dressing, that's why. The best you ever tasted. Mm -hmm. And what makes it so wonderful? It's swell, peppy flavor. Mind you, not too sharp, but just right. And is there any other dressing like Miracle Whip? No, because Miracle Whip is made differently, so it has a distinctive flavor. And is it mighty good tasting? Mm -hmm. Believe me, it is. So, Mike, shall I bring on the salad now? You mean with no questions asked? <laughs> well, just this one. Do you know what folks call Miracle Whip? Oh, let me see. Uh, miracle Whip? No, uh, yes. I mean, millions of folks <laughs> call Miracle Whip their favorite salad dressing. It's the one and only. Well, gee, Miracle Whip is just like my girl. How's that? Well, I call her my one and only. Yeah? Yeah, and so do millions of other guys. Oh. <laughs> hey, hey, now I remember what I had to tell you. Well, uh, I'll get that salad for you, Mike. Yeah, thanks, Ed. Yeah, we picked up a client of yours today, Mike. Client of mine? A uh, lady named Pearl Graham. How did you know I was working for her? Well, didn't she hire you to find her husband? Yeah, but I don't seem to be having much luck. Maybe you ought to try the morgue. What are you talking about? He's down there with a slug in his brain. Would you like to take a look at him? Well, I don't imagine I can do him any good. I'd sooner take a look at Mrs. Graham. Now, her, I may be able to help. <laughs> Kill Danny, Mr. Waring. You've got to believe me. And how come you didn't see the murderer? My back was to the door. You didn't hear it open? It was it was open all along. I, I just came in. What time was that? It was exactly 20 after 3. I remember looking at my watch. Danny bought it for me. He was always buying me presents. Uh, he sounds like the type. How do you explain the gun being found in the room? I don't know. You know your how your fingerprints got on it? I don't remember. I, 
I was so dazed, I must have picked it up without thinking. You weren't so dazed that you couldn't take your child and head for LaGuardia Airport. I didn't realize what I was doing. Did you realize you had a fight with your husband? That's a lie. Well, then why did Sergeant Corbett... What is this, a third degree? Just what side are you on? I want to be on yours, Pearl, but you've got to let me. Danny and I never had any trouble. Well, I heard... I don't care what you heard. He was a good husband and a wonderful father. Yeah, I know, and he was always buying you presents. He was. He never looked at another woman. Oh, and who was this Hazel one of the neighbors heard you yelling about? I don't know any Hazel. Didn't you accuse your husband of going away with her? No. Danny was going away on business for Mr. DeSantis. Oh, so we're back to DeSantis again. Have you any idea where I can find him? No. Danny never told me. Oh, that's right. Danny never told you anything. That's because he was considerate. He never wanted me to worry. He sounds too good to live. No wonder someone knocked him off. All right, Pearl, I'll do what I can. <laughs> Hiya, Mike. Well, what'll it be? Oh, just a cup of coffee, Ed. I hear you got yourself a new case. Yeah. Incidentally, did you know Danny Graham? Yeah, I used to drop by occasionally till I discouraged it. You know the man he worked for? Mm, who's that? Uh, Mr. DeSantis. DeSantis. No. Well, pass the word along, will you? If you can give me a lead, I'll be very... Yeah? Her phone call. Who is it? They don't say. All right, thanks. Hello? You Mike Warren? That's right. I hear you're looking for me. Who is this? Fred DeSantis. Oh, this is a great pleasure, Mr. DeSantis. I was beginning to believe you didn't exist. What's on your mind? Well, I'm working for a Pearl Graham. Pearl Graham? Yeah, her husband Danny was employed by you. I was wondering if we couldn't sit down somewhere and have a little talk. I think you'd find it more profitable if you talked to Larry Sloan. Larry Sloan? Yeah, look him up. He's stopping at the Wickersham. Well, what's he got to do with this mess? I'm not going to do all your work. Where can I reach you? It's kind of hard to say. I'm always on a move. But don't worry, Warren. I'll keep in touch. Hello, Sloan. Do I know you? I don't think so. My name is Mike Waring. Not the buzzard. Oh, I mean, the uh, falcon. Well, you may have had it right the first time. Well, what do you want? My client needs your help. A client? A girl named Pearl Graham. Oh, is that the widow? Then you know her husband was murdered. Yes, you? I heard it on the radio. Sad, wasn't it? Very. Well, now that we've got that settled, I don't think there's anything else to talk about. Oh, I don't know. Fred DeSantis thought we ought to get together. DeSantis? Mm-hmm. You spoke to him? Not more than ten minutes ago. Sigh. Yeah? This is Mike Waring. Glad to know you, sir. Frisk him. Sure. Yeah, look, fella, if you don't mind... Ah, shut up. This is my best suit. Well, I'm giving it a good pressing. He's clean, Larry. Well, that's the way my mother brought me up. Oh, this kid's a ball of fire. Yes, yeah. Maybe we'll have to put him out. Where is DeSantis Waring? I have no idea. You said you spoke to him. On the phone. You're lying. Oh. I'd like to see you try that again. Now, let me... Oh! Come on, Waring, get up. I said, get up. Where is DeSantis? I wouldn't tell you if I knew. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's a guy who's stubborn. All right, Si. Break him down. Well? He still ain't talking, Larry. And what'd you come out for? Get back in there. It's no use. He's out cold. You gotta hand it to the guy. He's got the constitution of a Knox. He knows where we can find DeSantis. Well, if he does, he ain't telling. Look, Sloan, I've been uh, doing a little thinking. Have you? Yeah. Much as I hate to say this, I think we can kiss that dough goodbye. Oh, you think so? Well, for all we know, that Danny Graham might have had it. Mm hmm. When did you think of that? Well, <laughs> I don't think I understand you, Larry. Sure you do, Cy. You're no dope. Thanks. You know, something just occurred to me. After Danny left here, you went to get the car. Mm-hmm. You were gone a long time. Well, I told you I was low on gas, so I thought I'd better fill up. 
Where'd you go for it? Texas? Oh, no, that's not right, Larry. You don't hear me making accusations. After all, you weren't around when I got back. I went to look for you. Where? In Texas? Don't you be smart. I'll tell you, Sloan. When people don't trust each other, it's no good. So? So, suppose I bow up. You mean, just like that? Why not? Well, uh, look what you invested in this thing. It was only time. Still, I feel you got something coming to you for all your trouble. Forget it. No, I wouldn't feel right. Stick around, Cy. I'll see you get yours. I didn't disturb you. How did you get in here? The door was open. I gotta talk to Larry about that. He's very careless. Where is he? I don't know. He and that Cy Nichols fellow must have gone out. Well, what's your name? Hazel. Hazel? Uh Uh-huh. Hazel Fulton. What's yours? Waring. Well, I'm very glad to make your acquaintance, Mr. Waring. Likewise. You'll pardon my not getting up. Oh, that's all right. I'm used to it. Every time you come into this room, there's someone stretched out on the bed. Oh, that's so. Who was the previous occupant? Danny Graham. Danny Graham? Yeah, you know him? Very well. Well, it certainly is a small world. <laughs> yeah, it certainly is. You phoned Graham's apartment last night. Who told you that? My spies. Well, uh, don't let on to Larry. Well, he's awful jealous. What did you want with Graham? Just wanted to find out how he was. I haven't seen him in, oh, I bet it must be at least five years. Hmm, had he changed much? Nah, I would have known him anywhere. I got a wonderful memory for faces. Now, take yours, for example. Yeah, I wish someone would. It's not doing me any good. Oh, you shouldn't talk that way, Mr. Waring. You got a lot of character in your face. Uh-huh. Just because it's all banged up don't make any difference. It does to me. No, I'm serious. Now, on the other hand, you take Larry. I'd love to. Any idea where I can find him? Well, he just opened an office in the Parker building, but I don't suppose he'd be there, do you? No, I don't suppose so. But we're not doing anything, so what have we got to lose? I I think it's down this way, Mr. Waring. Yeah, yeah, that's right. See, 419. Hazel, you're wonderful. (laughs) How long have you been in town? I just got in this afternoon. Boy, was that plain jammed. How'd you know about this office? Huh? Well, if you only got in this afternoon, who told you Sloan had an office in this building? He robbed me. What did you think? I don't know what to think. You're a very strange girl, Hazel. You really mean that? Mm. I can't make out it. You were saying? It's open. So what's the matter? Well, it's easy to see you never listen to mystery shows. Ooh, I think they're awful. <laughs> yeah, where's the light switch? I got it. My, my, that boyfriend of yours is quite sloppy, isn't he? Larry? Well, he's as neat as a pin. Well, this is a heck of a way to leave an office. Yeah, just look behind this door. <laughs> now, take it easy, Angel. Who? It's Larry's friend. Yeah. How are you, Si? What are you doing? The last time we met, he tried to make me talk, so I thought I'd do as much for him. Well, you can't say I didn't try. What now, Mike? Now, Angel, the police. Homicide, Sergeant Corbett. How are you doing, Sergeant? Oh, Mike? Yeah. Well, you've been keeping yourself. Your client's been asking for you. Well, you tell Mrs. Graham she's got nothing to worry about. I'll be down in five minutes with the proof she didn't kill her husband. What's your idea of proof? Ever hear of a lad named Cy Nichols? Uh, there was a Cy Nichols who used to run with Capone. Wouldn't be surprised if that's the boy. I just found his body. Yeah, where? In Larry Sloan's office. Uh, I heard Sloan was in town. Oh, yes, he's definitely moved in, Sergeant. You'd be surprised how quickly he picked up our local customs. What's all this got to do with your client? Well, it figures that the same party who killed Danny Graham killed Cy Nichols. Well? Well, what's wrong with you, Corbett? Nichols couldn't have been murdered more than an hour ago, and for the last 24 hours, you've had my client under lock and key. Guess again, Mike. Mrs. Graham raised 10 grand worth of bail at half past seven tonight. She didn't. And if you think that's something, wait till you hear the payoff. The guy who put up the dough was your friend. Larry Sloan. Well, the sergeant's news has probably surprised Mike. But me, I prefer more pleasant surprises. Like the first time I ever sat down to enjoy a salad topped with delicious Miracle Whip. 
Miracle Whip has a flavor so pleasing. Miracle Whip tastes so lively, so teasing. Miracle Whip only one of its kind. Miracle Whip best salad dressing you'll find. Miracle Whip is the only one of its kind because it's a different type of salad dressing made from a secret craft recipe. Miracle Whip combines the best qualities of old-fashioned boiled dressing and fine mayonnaise, so it's truly distinctive and delicious, with a flavor millions of folks call just exactly right. Try it, won't you? One taste will tell you why it's America's favorite salad dressing, the one and only Miracle Whip. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Just 20 minutes have passed since Mike Waring learned that Pearl Graham was released on bail supplied by Larry Sloan. Now, as we find the Falcon and Hazel. Is this your apartment? What does it say on the door? Michael Waring, private detective. Hey, you're a detective. Yeah, but don't breathe it to a soul. I'd hate for it to get out. Gee, you must be a real lifesaver. Nah, don't let that hole in my head fool you. Huh? You'll see it better when I turn on the lights. No, let what? me. Wait. You know, I'm going to have to change the lock on that door. This seems to happen every week. Well, you've got such a wonderful location, you can't blame people for making it to headquarters. Hello, Hazel. Don't you talk to me, Fred. Oh, I take it you two know each other. You don't hear me boast about it. Well, you might introduce me just the same. I'm Fred DeSantis. Yeah, I thought so. You won't believe this, DeSantis, but I've been looking all over for you. Well, that makes us even because I've been looking all over for you. Where's your client? My client? Danny Graham's wife. She's got 65 grand of my dough. You're a liar, Fred. It ain't your money. Larry's got as much right to it as you have. I'll leave it to him. Keep your mouth shut, Hazel. No, let her talk. I'd like to see someone stop me. Let me ask you, Mr. Waring. Just because Larry made a mistake and trusted Fred to grab the payroll from the Mayfair plant while Larry was busy covering the... I told you to shut up. It's a free country. That dough belongs to me, Waring. Well, what do you expect me to do about it? Get it from Pearl Graham. She's got it. How do you figure that? Because a girlfriend of mine turned it over to her husband. I gave him a note for it. So? So if they didn't find it on Danny's body, who else could have grabbed it? I never thought of that. Did you, Sergeant? Frankly, no. Hey, what's he doing here? Playing cops and robbers. Did you hear enough, Corbett? You betcha. He's going to make a great witness against your client. He'll make a better one against himself. What are you talking about? Well, it's getting late, DeSantis. And if you don't get it by now, believe me, you certainly will. It's Sing Sing. Coffee's awful good. Oh, thanks, Mike. Yours okay, Sergeant? Yeah, it's well, Ed. <laughs> oh, say, Mike, uh, yep. just between us girls, will you admit that you were lucky? I was lucky? Yeah. There was no way on earth you could have pegged DeSantis for the killer. Oh, why, well, it's as obvious as the hole in my head. Now, you grant me that the 65 grand he and Larry Sloan stole in that payroll heist was the motive for the killings. Well? Well, then Sloan had to be innocent. Why do you say that? Because if Larry had the money, he wouldn't have bothered to bail out my client. He put up 10000 hoping she'd lead him to sixty-five. Would have been a good investment if it worked. Yeah, that's practically what he told us when we picked him up. Well, sure, it's the only thing that makes sense. Well, what about your client? Well, what about her? Well, she could have murdered her husband. Yeah, but not Cy Nichols. Why not? Well, first of all, Pearl had no motive. And second of all, she was with Sloan. So by a process of elimination, it had to be DeSantis. See, he killed Graham because Danny double-crossed him. Then he went to work on Cy Nichols... Hoping you'd pin it on Sloan and get Larry out of his hair. Oh, then DeSantis had the dough all along? That's right. When Pearl Graham grabbed her kid and beat it after Danny's murder, DeSantis just walked in and helped himself to the loot. Hey, wait a minute. Hmm? Aren't you overlooking something? I don't think so. Well, uh, aren't you forgetting Hazel? Oh, say, you're right, I am. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> so long, Ed. I'll be seeing you, Sergeant. <laughs> Imagine this, rich, delicious chocolate-flavored malted milk made right in your own kitchen. Good idea, isn't it? And it's easy to make, too, with Kraft's wonderful chocolate-flavored malted milk. Here's how you do it. Make a tasty paste of some Kraft malted milk and a little milk in the bottom of a tall glass. Fill that glass with chilled milk, stir it again, and you have it. A delicious Kraft malted. Real nourishing as well, because it's full of all the food values in milk. Enjoy a Kraft malted often. Get a jar of Kraft 
chocolate-flavored malted milk from your grocer tomorrow. The Case of the Bashful Boss. The Case of the Bashful Boss. That's the title of next week's adventure of the Falcon when Mike Waring learns that some people operate on the theory that the way to keep a bad man down is to shoot him down. So be sure to listen at this same time next week to another exciting adventure of the Falcon brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company. The adventures of the Falcon transcribed today are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, Produced by Bernard L. Schubert, written tonight by Eugene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Music was by Arlo. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon with Chuck Webster as Sergeant Corbin. This is Ed Hurley. He's speaking for the Kraft Foods Company. The Kraft Foods Company brings you The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. Hello. Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Claire. I'm glad you called. Now you'll have to give me a rain check, Angel. I've got to teach a boy a lesson. Somebody once told him talk was cheap, but the way he runs off at the mouth, it figures he'll be stopped dead. This is Ed Hurley, he friends, inviting you on behalf of the Kraft Foods Company to listen to The Adventures of the Falcon, transcribed tonight. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now, join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Loose Lip. Miracle Whip. Has a flavor so pleasing. Miracle Whip. Tastes so lively, so teasing. Miracle Whip. Only one of its kind. Miracle Whip. Best salad dressing you'll find. Miracle Whip tastes really good. Not too sharp, not too mild, but just exactly right. And Miracle Whip tastes different, too. Different from any other salad dressing, because Miracle Whip is made by a secret craft recipe. So, tomorrow, when you're shopping... Be sure to get a jar of delicious Miracle Whip. Get either the regular size, or if you make a lot of salads, get the thrifty quart size jar. Remember, no other salad dressing tastes like the one and only Miracle Whip. Now, the case of the loose lip. It's Wednesday evening in New York City, and a shifty little character named Lippy Mayo consults the phone book in the rear of the 68 Club. And as his finger glides down the page, someone taps him gently on the shoulder. Excuse me, friend. What? What are you doing here, Daniels? Matter of fact, Lippy, I was looking for you. Me? Yeah. Frank Vargas wants to see you. Well, Vargas will have to wait. I've, I've got an important call to make. That's what he's afraid of. Now, look, Daniels, if if Frank is worried about me ratting on that Mason stick-up... Yeah? Well, he he, he don't have to. I'm, I'm not the kind of a guy who shoots off my mouth. I'm sure Vargas will be glad to hear that, Lippy. Suppose we step outside and tell him. No. Now, don't be difficult. Hey, put away that cannon, Daniels. You're not bluffing me. You wouldn't dare pull any rough stuff here. You mean because of the crowd? Yeah. Just goes to show you, Lippy, you don't know your mob psychology. A five will get you ten that if I was to plug you here and now, those folks out there would fall all over themselves running the other way. Who do you think you're kidding? Believe me, fella, I know whereof I speak. Now, what do you say we go and see Vargas? No. <laughs> Hello, Mike. Steve Mayo, come in. Thanks. Well, haven't seen you since the end of the war. When'd you pull into town? About 20 minutes ago. What brings you here? My brother. Did you ever hear of a character named Lippy Mayo? You mean you're related to Lippy? Only on my father and mother's side. Oh, I see. You ever run across him? Well, uh... It's all right, Mike. I can understand why no one would be overly fond of Lippy. Matter of fact, I'm not too crazy about him myself. You know he was shot tonight. Yeah, so I heard. How is he? Doc says he'll pull through, but he'll be paralyzed for life. Oh, too bad. You uh, wouldn't happen to know who was responsible? 
No, I wouldn't. Suppose you could find out for me? No, I don't think I'd care to, Steve. Suppose I put it on a professional basis as a private detective at your usual fee. Oh, I still wouldn't be interested. In... First of all, it's a job for the police. And secondly? Well, secondly, I think I got an idea what you have in mind. And you don't approve? Nope, not a bit. Okay, friend, no hard feelings. I suppose there are other ways of finding out. Uh, listen to me. Uh... Sorry, Mike, I haven't time. Got a lot of work to do. I better be on my way. <laughs> I don't want to heckle, Vargas, but don't you think it's time we headed for home? No, Daniels, the cops might be waiting. Well, what do you intend to do, cruise around for the next five years? We'll go home when I'm good and ready. Anything you say. You think you killed Lippy? I didn't wait for the autopsy. You shouldn't have shot him. Why, what were you planning to do, buy him an annuity? You didn't have to pick out such a public place. Maybe you were spotted. I wasn't. You can't ever tell. Matter of fact, there's a car behind us now. Yeah, so there is. What makes you think we're playing follow the leader? He's been behind us for the last five blocks ever since we got off Madison. Turn up 103rd. Well? You're right. What should I do? You're the boss, remember? Don't be such a wise guy. You know I don't know this neighborhood. When you get halfway up near the next block, make a sharp right. There's an alley there. What does it lead to? Nowhere. It's a dead end. Just drive in and cut your motor. Now, easy now. You don't want to pass it. Here? Yeah. Turn off your lights. You see him? Not yet. Here he comes. There he goes. It's not a squad car. I didn't think it was. You got a cigarette? Sure. Thanks. What's the matter, Frank? You're shaking. Well, I guess I'm kind of jumpy. I ain't been sleeping so good lately. Too much coffee, I bet. Look, Daniel, just because I thought that car was following us. It was. What are you talking about? Didn't you notice the make? It was a Nash. A green Nash. Does that ring a bell? I gave one like that to Eileen Dewey. And then you gave her the air. Think Eileen was following me? I think it's a point well worth investigating. Okay, Daniels. See what you can find out. <laughs> Hello, Eileen. Why, if it isn't Mr. Daniels. Surprise? Not as much as you think. Why didn't he come himself? Who? Frank. Oh, you think Vargas sent me? Hmm? I know he did. You're absolutely right. Do you mind if I sit down? I certainly do. You can tell Mr. Vargas for me. I don't care what he's got to say. I'm through with him. All right, let's have it. What? Whatever he wanted you to tell me. Not that it's going to do him any good. After what Vargas did to me. Yeah, it was a rotten trick. And after you gave him the best years of your life. I knew he'd get tired of that Georgia peach he's been running around with. Mm, not so you'd notice it. You mean Frank didn't send you here to... Effect a reunion? Yeah. No. You're lying. Frank's crazy about me. If he is, he certainly got us both fooled. Danny, please don't rip me. I couldn't take it. What did Frank have to say? I want you to stop chasing him. Chasing him? Yeah, it's awfully bad for his nerves. It was quite a scare you gave him tonight. When did you start trailing us? I don't know what you're talking about. It was you in that car. But I haven't been out all evening. That's what your doorman told me. If you think I'd run after a meatball like Frank Vargas, mm -hmm. you're crazy. I can't even stand him. All I have to do is whistle and I could have a million guys. And with more money, too. Sure, sure you could, Eileen. So stay away from Frank. I tell you, I hate him. I'd like to see him dead. If I could get my hands on him for just... Danny, talk to him for me. Will you tell him I won't be jealous anymore? I'll do anything Don't you want. Don't die, Eileen. He wouldn't have you back on a bet. Who does he think he is? I'll show him. I know what he's been up to. I saw him tonight in front of... Yeah? Go on, Eileen. What were you going to say? Nothing. Just tell Mr. Vargas for me he's going to regret this. For every sleepless night I spent, he's going to spend a hundred. Well, that's the story, Frank. 
I got the impression Eileen was kind of peeved with you. So it was her in that car. That would be my guess. What are you going to do about it? I'll take care of it. When? When I'm good and ready. Now, there's something you don't realize, Frank. And there's something you don't realize, Daniels. You're working for me. Get smart and you'll be out. Do we understand each other? Sure. What time you got? It's almost ten. Wonder what's keeping that tomato. I don't think Betty Lou would like hearing you call her that. When I need your advice on how to handle women, I'll let you know. Call downstairs. I and... imagine that must be the little lady now. Forget it. Since you asked so nicely. You Frank Vargas? Uh-uh. That him? Now, uh, just a second. You, uh... You Vargas? Who are, who are you? Steve Mayo. Mayo? Yeah. Maybe you know my brother Leo. No. Oh, sure you do, Frank. He's the boy they call Lippy. You keep out of this, mister. But throw him out, Daniels. I asked you something, Vargas. <laughs> you know my brother? But just to say hello to. What about goodbye? Huh? He was shot a couple of hours ago. Or haven't you heard? Is he... Dead? No. Might just as well be. Completely paralyzed. Paralyzed? What do you know about it? Nothing. Do we, Danny? Nope. See? I got a tip you were looking for Lippy tonight. Who says Never so? Never mind. What'd you want him for? I didn't want him for anything. Whoever says I did is full of baloney. If you're lying, Vargas. Cut it out! Try to kill my brother? No! Now, who did? I don't know! Will you be in around one o'clock tonight? Why? Because I may want to talk to you again. If you think I'm staying here. Yes, I do. <laughs> you know what's good for you? You won't move till I come back. Just remember that. You know something, Frank? I think Mr. Mayo meant every word he said. Get out. Why? What's the matter? You were a great help. Why didn't you stop him? Well, to be perfectly honest, I did think of it, but I'm glad I stifled the impulse. Because it confirms a suspicion of mine. Yeah? Yeah. You're not so tough. You think so? I know so. And if a guy like you can get along, I think I'll go in business for myself. <laughs> They'll be sorry if they think they can push me. Ooh, what are you doing, Betty? Oh, it's your own fault, Frank. If you're going to squirm like that, I'm not going to be able to fix that eye. How does it look? You just wait till I finish with the powder. Oh, black eye or no, you're still the handsomest thing in New York. Well, that Eileen Dewey was crazy to let you get away. Who told you about Eileen? Oh, I heard stories. But you're not going to get away from me. Come here, baby. Oh, ain't I shameless? They used to say back home there wasn't a man born who could turn Betty Lou Moss's head. How is it down there? Hmm? Down where? Where you come from, Georgia. Oh, oh, it's just wonderful, Frank. You'd really love it. Okay, we'll leave tonight. But, but first we go to California. I got but, some business there. I want you to get two tickets on the chief. Now, sugar, I couldn't leave on such short notice. Why not? Well, I, I got my career to think of. Professor Nagel said Don't make I... me laugh. As soon as you pick up the tickets, give me a ring. What? I'll tell you where to meet me. Well, what are you waiting for? Well, I, I don't have any money. Oh. Well, remember that envelope I gave you last Saturday? Uh, you mean the one with all those hundred... How did you know what was in there? Uh, Frank, you hurt my arm. Where's the dough? It's in, in my hotel safe. Get it. But... Go on, get it. You better be back before 1230, because if I got to come looking for you, you're going to lose more than that accent. Your order, please. My order, please. This is Frank Vargas in 219. Yes, Mr. Vargas. Yes, Mr. Vargas. What's the matter with you people, anyhow? I asked you to send up the barber an hour ago. Well, I'm sure he must be on his way. How's he coming? By Pony Express? Listen, you, if that guy isn't up yet... Hold it. Okay, okay, I heard you. You certainly took your... Took your... <laughs> Oh, hi, Mike. Uh, hi, Ed. Hey, is Sergeant Corbett around? No. That's funny. He told me to meet him here at your luncheonette. It didn't sound like he, his mind was on food. Hmm. Is yours? Huh? Well, no, Ed, I'll tell you. I, I don't really know. 
Corbett was so bothered, he got me all hot, and I don't think I'm very hungry. Mike, I know just the thing for you. Hmm? Just the thing to perk up your interest. You do? I sure do. The prettiest. Oh, blonde or brunette? Coolest. Coolest? Crispiest, greenest salad you ever ate. Oh, fine. That's what I mean, Mike. A salad like that is fine for perking up your appetite. And, Mike, I'll make it with Miracle Whip. Why, Ed, how exciting. You really mean it? Mike, I wouldn't joke about that. You know, the salad dressing is one of the important things to consider when you make a salad. And Miracle Whip is the right salad dressing to consider because it makes salads taste better than ever. Mm -hmm. The folks at Kraft tell me it's made from a secret recipe. That's why it tastes so different and good. Gives salads a, a peppy flavor, you know. And not too peppy, either. I, I'd say it makes them taste just right. Wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. Why, I say that all the time. Uh, they taste just right with the... Miracle Whip. Why, millions of folks think so, Mike. That's why Miracle Whip is America's favorite salad dressing. Sure. Did you know that more Miracle Whip is sold than the next 20 leading brands combined? Mike? Huh? Oh, gee, gee I'm sorry. Ed, I, I was thinking about that pretty blonde, uh, cool green salad uh, you mentioned before. Fix me one, huh? Okay. And how about one of your super deluxe hamburgers, too? <laughs> okay, Mike, you're forgiven. <laughs> Miracle Whip is such a swell salad dressing, I guess I get carried away sometimes. I see that's a hamburger and a salad. Hey, that sounds pretty good, Ed. Suppose you fix that for me, too. Will do, Sarge. Oh, about time, Corbett. You know how long I've been waiting? Well, I was detained. You know uh, Steve Mayo? Why? I hear tell he was up to see you yesterday. Yeah, he wanted to know who might have gunned his brother, Lippy. Did you help him out? Nope. Why not? Because I was afraid of what he might do if he ever caught up with the character. Well, of course, I've got no proof, but I heard it was Frank Vargas. That's what I heard, too. Well, apparently everybody was in on the news, so I don't suppose Steve had much trouble finding it out. What are you talking about? Vargas was killed an hour ago. No. Yes. And you think Steve Mayo... Uh-huh. Is he in the brig? Yeah. I gotta see him, Corbin. Well, what about the food? Well, Ed will have to keep it for us. Right now, there's something more important we've got to do. Hi, Steve. Mike. Yeah, I thought I'd look in on you. I well, appreciate it. I, uh, just been talking to Sergeant Corbett. I can imagine what he said. I'd like to help you, Steve. I certainly could use it. Did you, uh, kill Frank Vargas? <laughs> what do you think? You were looking for him. No, I wasn't. Now, look, Steve, you came to but me... But I wasn't looking for Vargas. I just asked if you knew anybody who might have shot Lippy. You didn't know. Well, you could have learned it somewhere else. According to his boy Daniels, you were up to see him tonight. I was just taking pot luck. Who tipped you that Vargas might have shot your brother? I don't exactly remember. Can you remember approximately? No. Well, do you happen to recall whether it was a male or female? Mm -mm. Steve, you're not being very helpful. I'm sorry, Mike, but I'm not going to involve innocent people. If you don't want to go ahead with what you've got... What I've a... got? <laughs> you've given me absolutely nothing to go on. Well, he told me the Falcon was the guy who could make something out of nothing. Let's see you prove it. Yes? How do you do? What do you want? Well, it all depends. You, Eileen Dewey? I'm supposing I am. Well, then I'd like a few minutes of your time. Who are you? Waring is the name, Mike Waring. Oh, I'm not the Falcon. Well, now I know it pays to advertise. Hey, don't tell me you're drinking alone. You don't approve? Well, not when you can have company. Help yourself. Oh, thank you. Oh, isn't this cozy in? What's on your mind? Murder. Anyone I know? I think so. Ever hear of a gentleman named Frank Vargas? What about him? Well, he's the late unlamented. Is that supposed to be a hot flash? No, I was sure you must have seen the papers. As a matter of fact, that's where I picked up your name. I think I read something about your carrying a torch. That's a lie. Well, I'm sure it is, Eileen. A man would have to be out of his mind to give up a girl like you. But then some men don't know when they're well off. Oh, you can say that again. Sure, Frank must have been crazy to let that, uh... uh what's her name again? Hey, look, what are you up to? I was just trying to find out if you nursed any grievances. Me? Hmm. Oh. Don't make me laugh. All I had to do was to pick up that phone and Frank would come running back. Well, then you wouldn't be the one who killed him, hmm? 
I thought the police nabbed the man who did. You mean Steve Mayo? Mm Mm-hmm. You know, it's a funny thing, Eileen. Is it? Yeah, I think so, because all it said in the papers was that the police were holding an unidentified suspect. They didn't mention names. So? So? That forces me to one conclusion. You must have been the one who tipped off Steve Mayo that Vargas did that job on Lippy. Get out. Now, Eileen. How are you going to get out of here? If I thought for one minute that you meant... I'll show you. (laughs) You certainly did. You... All right, Eileen. I'll give you another chance when your temper and your aim improve. Welcome home, Betty Lou. How'd you get in here, Danny? I told the room clerk I was your brother from the South. You what? Yeah, you should have heard me, honey. Can you all tell me all well... You got uh... your nerve. Yeah, but that's all I got, Betty. You got a lot more. What? What are you talking about? That nasty stuff, money. Money? Mm Mm-hmm. Last time I spoke to Frank Vargas, he told me you were holding a bundle for him. Well, I returned it. When? I don't see where that's any of your business, Mr. Daniels. No, I guess that comes under the heading of police business. What what do you mean? When the cops found his body, there wasn't a dime on him. You think you're pretty smart, don't you? Smart enough. Well, you're not as clever as you believe. No? No. Suppose I'd tell the police you had a falling out with Frank. Oh, now you wouldn't do that, would you, Sugar Plum? Mm. Danny, you, you're choking me. Come on, Betty, where's Frank's roll? I, I gave it to him. And I'll give it to you if you don't stop playing games. Now, where's that dough? <laughs> Who's there? Mike Waring, Daniels. Hope not. Who? Mike Waring. Just a second. Okay, come in. Hello, Denny. Well, it brings you down this neck of the woods. Well, it's a long story. Well, you better save it, then. I'm catching the 9 o'clock plane for St. Louis. Well, it's all right. You've still got a half hour. I've been wanting to talk to you for some time. About what? Frank Vargas's murder. Don't tell me you're working for that Steve Mayo character. Yep. Well, lots of luck. I'm going to need more than that. You used to know Vargas pretty well. You might even say we were inseparable. Mm-hmm. Well, who do you think killed him? What about your client? You naturally can't expect me to go for that. Then I don't know what you're going to do, Waring. You can't suggest anyone else? Nope. You know, there's a slight flaw in your story, Danny. Yeah? We should show me where. Well, if you and Frank were inseparable... We were. Then how come you let Steve Mayo bounce him around? Oh, we all make mistakes. Yeah, that was yours. Because the police might think you wanted to see Frank get hurt. So you think when Mayo didn't do it for me, I did it myself, hmm? Well, you claimed there was no one else in the picture. Go on, get out. That thing loaded? It is. And I'd be within my rights if I plugged you. You're trespassing here. How do I know you're not a burglar? Well, am I? You do know your rights. Maybe we can work out a deal. Cut it out, you jerk. You would try a stunt like that. Operator, get me the police. I just shot a burglar. Right now, I'd venture a guess that Dan Daniels will never win a popularity poll. But talking about popularity, here's something that really is popular. It's the most popular salad dressing ever created. Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip. Has a flavor so pleasing. Miracle Whip. Tastes so lively, so teasing. Miracle Whip. Only one of its kind. Miracle Whip. The best salad dressing you'll find. Miracle Whip is the only one of its kind. Because it's a different type of salad dressing made from a secret craft recipe. Miracle Whip combines the best qualities of old-fashioned boiled dressing and fine mayonnaise. So it's truly distinctive and delicious. With a flavor millions of folks call just exactly right. Try it, won't you? One taste will tell you why it's America's favorite salad dressing. The one and only Miracle Whip. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Four hours have passed since Mike Waring was shot by Danny Daniels. And now, as we find the Falcon, he's much the worse for wear. Hey, how do you feel, Mike? Rotten, thanks. I can't move my right arm. No wonder it's in a sling, huh? You'll never learn. I'll lay you two to one. You'll be doing the same thing again next week. 
What hospital is this, anyway? Hospital? Don't you recognize a prison infirmary when you see it? A what? Well, you know breaking and entering's a penal offense. Breaking and entering? That's what the man claimed. Daniels? Uh Uh-huh. Listen, Sergeant, I got this whole thing figured out. Now, look, why don't you just relax? Daniels killed Frank Vargas. Where's your proof? Well, what else would he plug me for? Well, he thought you were a thief. Are you? I might consider it if I thought the rest of the force wasn't smarter than you. I tell you, Danny killed Vargas, and I can prove it. How? Well, Vargas gave Eileen Dewey the heave hole for another girl. So? So Daniels denied that Frank had anyone else on the string. Now, why would he say that? This other girl must have seen Danny kill Frank. That would be the best reason of all to keep her out of this. Mm, makes sense. Well, now all you got to do is find her. Oh, that's the easiest thing in the world. Her name's Betty Lou Morse. How did you know that? Well, contrary to popular belief, we do work occasionally. Mm-hmm. Well, then it's a cinch. All you got to do is get this Betty Lou to talk. Well, that's the part that's going to be tough. Even you couldn't get anything out of this girl. Uh-oh, don't tell me. All right, I won't. Uh, but in case the guy in the next bed's curious, she's dead. <laughs> Hello, Eileen. Well, well, well. Are you back again? Yes, indeed. Only this time I brought the sergeant along. How do you do? Now, look, I don't have to stand... What happened to your arm? Oh, you weren't the only one who tossed things my way today. Only the other party's aim was better. Now, listen, Eileen... If you're going to start asking me questions again about Frank's murder... Yeah? I still got the same answers. I don't know anything about it. What about Betty Lou Morse? Betty Lou Morse? Yeah, she was killed with the same gun. I don't even know the girl. Well, you know she picked up with Vargas where you left off. I didn't kill her. No one says you did. All the sergeant and I want you to do is uh, clean up a couple of loose ends. What makes you think I cared? You tipped off Steve Mayo that Vargas shot his brother Lippy. I was just guessing. No, you weren't. It was too close. All right. I was following Frank around yesterday when I saw him pull up at the 68 Club. What time was this? Around a quarter of eight. Well, what happened? Danny got out of the car. A few minutes later, I heard some shots. Well, then Daniels was the one who gunned Lippy, not Vargas. Yep. Well, I guess that does it, Mike. After Daniels did that job on Lippy, he must have had a run-in with Frank and gave him the same medicine, only in a stronger dose. Hey, I'd better get a wanted out on him. Yeah, you better. And it's for you, young lady. Mm-hmm. We're going to have to hold you as a material witness. No, no. Well, must you bother her with that, Sergeant? What's the matter, Mike? You know the law. Well, that's the point I'm trying to make. If you want to hold Eileen, why not make it for murder? What are you talking about? we have been giving Daniels too much credit. He shot Lippy, but uh, you killed Vargas and Betty Lou Morse. Madison and 59th first, driver. Say, Mike. Hmm? You weren't kidding about Eileen killing Frank Vargas? No, of course not. Why did she do it? She was crazy about him. <laughs> Great way to show it. Well, he brushed her off. Uh, what about Betty Lou Morse? Well, if Eileen murdered Frank, she certainly wasn't going to let her rival get off scot-free. How do you know? You told me. Me? Yes, you said both Vargas and Betty were killed with the same gun. So? So that eliminated Steve Mayo and Daniels. Oh, I can see Mayo. He was in a brig. But how do you figure Daniels? Well, look, what time was Betty Lou killed? Well, like I said, 8.30. And you remember when I went up to visit Daniels, he claimed he was going to make a 9 o'clock flight and he had a half hour to kill? Sure. If Daniels was pumping lead into you at 8.30, he couldn't be doing it to Betty Lou. That leaves only Eileen. There you are. See how simple it is? Uh, Any further questions? Uh, Yeah, yeah. How do you account for the fact Daniels didn't kill you? Luck of the Irish. Oh, you call that luck? With that right arm in a sling, what good are you for the next week? That's your drinking and romancing arm, isn't it? Yep. (laughs) Then you're better off dead. Oh, it has its compensations. That's also my check-grabbing arm. Driver. Yeah? He'll take care of it. Good night, friend. If a rich and cool chocolate-flavored malted milk is one of your favorite drinks, you'll be mighty pleased to discover Kraft chocolate-flavored malted milk. Because with Kraft chocolate-flavored malted milk, you can make a delicious malted right in your own kitchen. Just make a tasty paste of some Kraft malted milk and a little milk in the bottom of a big glass. Then fill the glass with chilled milk, stir once again, and there you have one of the most delicious malted you've ever want to taste. Get a jar of Kraft chocolate-flavored malted milk tomorrow and treat your whole family to luscious, cool Kraft malteds often.
The case of the beautiful bait. The case of the beautiful bait. That's the title of next week's adventure of the Falcon. When Mike Waring learns that if people play with dynamite, somebody is likely to explode. So be sure to listen at the same time next week to another exciting adventure of the Falcon, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company. The adventures of the Falcon, transcribed tonight, are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced by Bernard L. Schubert, written tonight by Eugene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Music was by Arlo. Les Payman was starred as the Falcon with Chuck Webster, Sergeant Corbett. This is Ed Hurley. He's speaking for the Kraft Foods Company. 